All right. Um, so for your last uh, project in the type hierarchy unit, you're going to have three choices. Uh, this is your first choice. Um, you'll have the option to redesign uh, three movie or gig posters of your choice. Um, you can use any photos of the band or the film. Uh, and again, just to clarify, a gig poster is like a poster for a concert by a band um, at a future venue or, you know, an existing after an existing concert. Sometimes they're collectible items, so, you know, bands will just have them made just to commemorate the event, and, you know, fans will buy them even if they didn't go just because the posters look cool. So uh, that's kind of what a gig poster is. Um, you need to uh, essentially collect images, and then you can use any kind of font or what have you that you want, but you got to redesign that particular part. Uh, you have to redesign how the font it, it integrates with the imagery. Uh, so I'm going to encourage you to use um, a lot of different uh, extra tools in Illustrator that I'll show you how to do in the demonstration real quick here at the end. And uh, I'll also encourage that you uh, heavily Photoshop or mess around with the images you collect so that they're not just straight out of the film or straight out of the straight from wherever you got them. Um, so uh, the reason you have to design three of them is to match the level of work that uh, the other projects require of you. And the other projects in this project group here require quite a bit of work. So um, redesigning three of these expertly is kind of equivalent to uh, the objects in terms of scope and, and uh, time spent. Here's some student examples. Um, they're okay. Uh, they did a good job of reorganizing the text using good appropriate pro photos. Um, the one on the right though I just have as an example, it has a misspelling right here. They misspelled kidnappers. Um, the sun part at the end is intentional and goes along with the story. Uh, but the artwork is original. That's at least something. Uh, that's noteworthy, but uh, make sure you spell check and make sure you include all the information because uh, I believe this was a cover for a book and nowhere on here is the author, which would probably be an important part of the book cover. Uh, the poster on the left, however, does have all the information that's needed for the poster. Uh, make sure you include all that information, even though you probably don't want to. That's necessary information for this style of poster. Um, especially the movie poster. There's an awful lot of stuff that gets put on there that becomes kind of secondary in the hierarchy. So, you know, you have to design that as well as a designer. So make sure you include it. Uh, the rest of this lecture is just examples of uh, movie posters and gig posters. And there is also a couple of redesigns of various posters. So take a look at those for ideas. And then um, when you're ready, start collecting images and uh, start redesigning. All right, your uh, second option for the last project in the type hierarchy unit is to design a brand. Uh, a brand identity is kind of one of those big things in graphic design. Uh, companies that ask for a redesign of their brand identity are asking an awful lot of you uh, because the brand is essentially 
what we think of when we think of a company visually. Like when you think of Nike, you think of the swoosh and those Nike letters and how they kind of look on a shoe or a jacket. Um, and you know the just do it campaign. That's that's part of the brand identity. So brand identities are huge, all-encompassing things. Um, for this particular project, you're just going to have to design a, a handful of the things associated with the brand identity. Uh, it is required that you design all these components for this project. You need to make a black and, a black and white mark, a full color mark, or a full color logo. Uh, that can include text or not include text. I highly recommend you include text, otherwise we're not going to know what company it belongs to. Uh, you need to design the letterhead, and the letterhead comprises an envelope, the stationery, and a business card. Uh, this is essentially any printed material for your company. Uh, it, the business card is kind of left blank, and then you know whoever is part of the business gets their own business card with that design on it. Same goes for the stationery and the envelope. Any department in the company can use that stationery or envelope, and it'll look unified, like it comes from the company if you give it that overarching design to it. Uh, and then, last but not least, you need to design three extra aspects of the brand. So something like the uniform, uh, the packaging, uh, an ad campaign, or you know a, the logo as it appears on a product. Um, doesn't matter what you make, you just need three extra components. Um, before you make your mark or your logo, as it's sometimes called, uh, you need to sketch it out. So uh, I highly recommend you sketch out about 10 examples and then uh, scan the ones you're happy with and uh, just use Live Trace to scan to kind of convert that into vectors. And then um, you can probably make uh, your letterhead and logo all in Illustrator, but uh, you're going to have to bring it into Photoshop to do the three extra brand aspects at the end. Um, I'm not going to require you to use effects and gradients, but it's highly encouraged that you do. I will show you how to do that in the demonstration at the end. Um, and then uh, make sure you keep the entire brand identity uh, sort of like synthesized and sort of unified by the colors you pick and the symbol or the logo that you make. Uh, here's a student example. Uh, you can see the logo in the lower right hand corner and then uh, you know the color variations of that logo and then the three aspects of that logo on other you know parts of the brand and then the letterhead here's another student example an excellent student example um, the only problem being <laughs> that uh, on the envelope here the address is in the wrong location the return address would be on the upper left hand corner obviously. But uh, a good brand nonetheless, she keeps it unified through color and then um, her applications are pretty, uh, you know, well done. I, I believe it was a, a spa of some sort, so she had a billboard and some sweaters and some lotion from the spa. Uh, the rest of this uh, PowerPoint is just examples of brand and uh, brand identities, so just take a look at them and take a look at what you can do. Uh, and then in the kind of demonstration, I'll sort of walk through some things you want to consider when uh, you're making this final project. All right, so your last choice for the last project in the type unit is the money hierarchy redesign. So you're going to redesign any three bills from uh, Euro, the U.S. currency, uh, the dollar, or you know a fictional currency if you want, or another country's currency if you're more familiar with those. Um, you do have to design the front and back of those bills. So you will end up with six designs, but they're granted very small. Uh, they're the size of a dollar bill. That doesn't mean they're not complex. Um, I, I'm going to require that you uh, use your own drawings or take your own photos for this. Um, that is kind of different, a little bit different than some of these other projects here where you're using photos you find on the internet. So uh, 
that can be a little frustrating for some, but it, it's kind of forcing you to, to manage your own resources in a way and be more creative. Uh, I would like you to kind of sketch out your idea, hopefully, before you start designing your bills. Have some kind of clear plan before you start. And then think back to everything you know about graphic order and visual hierarchies. How are you going to make the $100 bill, if you choose to design it, the most important looking bill as opposed to a $1 bill or a $5 bill? Um, you need to have on each bill, though, uh, the identifying information for that bill. So, you know, the country, what treasury it's from, uh, what, you know, person is on that bill, so like a president or a famous person or some fictional character. Uh, you need to have the serial number, the actual value of the bill or the piece of currency. And then I highly encourage you to use uh, like some other kind of pattern or shape or something to create a, a visual hierarchy of sorts. Um, again, like the other two projects, you're not required to use these last couple of uh, illustrator effects, gradients, that kind of thing. Um, but I highly encourage you to explore some of these options, and I'll go over those in the demonstration video at the end here. Um, so yeah, here's a student example. Uh, this is a really good student example. They chose superheroes, so they redesigned every superhero uh, logo, and then they took uh, photos of their friends in superhero costumes. So this student uh, was able to get a hold of some costumes from, like, uh, I think a theater department or something, and then you know, he just sort of did the redesigns in uh, Illustrator and then combined them for his, his uh, money. But it's it's unified by that theme of superheroes and, you know, it was rather easy to shoot and, and pretty straightforward. Uh, these are some other examples of uh, money that students have redesigned. Uh, the student on top used photos of her friend. Um, and then on the bottom, I, I don't think that student used any drawings per se, but you know they did incorporate non-graphic elements wisely. Um, here's all the uh, required information you need on your bill. Uh, the stuff that's crossed out is stuff that's on an actual dollar bill, but I don't expect you to have it. Uh, you need some kind of, again, Federal Reserve seal of some sort. You can make one up and use it for all your bills, or you can just copy the one off of the dollar bill. If you look up Federal Reserve Seal in Google, you'll probably find an image of it already isolated for you. You just got to Photoshop it into your bill's picture or uh, put it in there in Illustrator. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, I don't necessarily care if you have the great seal on, a, on the reverse side of your bill, but um, Try to have, you know, the Treasury Secretary signatures on there. Try to have a serial number on there uh, so that you have some more information to kind of balance. And then, again, make sure you have the country, uh, the bill's value, and um, write out the bill value in words. So $1 or one euro, uh, depending on what it is you're redesigning. The rest of this PowerPoint is just examples of redesigned money. Uh, the Project Money Redesign is an actual website that collects uh, images of redesigned bills from various students and other designers around the world. So check out that uh, uh, project website if you really want to see some other examples. Um, yeah, so this again, last project. Uh, in the demonstration I'll go over some basics of what I expect to see in these projects. Um, it'll be a very quick video, not very specific, but it'll show you kind of some of the things you can play around with in these projects if you want. All right, I'm going to walk you through some uh, things you can try for the final uh, type project. Of course, if you remember, there are three choices for that project. You can make a movie or gig poster, you can design a brand identity, or you can redesign uh, some, some money. Uh, 
I'm not going to go into the specifics of I, either of those assignments, but I am going to kind of uh, show you some uh, some new tips and tricks for editing type to kind of make it look a bit more fancy. Um, since this is, in fact, the last project for this unit, and it has to do with type. So here I've got some type all ready to go, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with it. Um, first things first, uh, to truly play with type, you got to expand it. So that'll be the first thing I'll do. Just right click and then create outlines. Um, and I'm actually going to apply a gradient to it. So to do that, uh, I need to make sure that these are all a compound path if I want the gradient to be applied to the entire group of letters. If I click on a gradient now, it'll just apply to each individual letter. Uh, and I don't want that. Um, so make sure that uh, you use a compound path to put the gradient inside all of the shapes uh, in your complex shape here, your compound shape. Uh, so to do that, uh, you just select your object, go to Object, Compound Path, Make, okay? And then you can fill it with a gradient. Uh, a couple of tips for the gradient tool here. The gradient tool is also a tool in the toolbox. And if you click on it, you'll have this uh, overlay of what the gradient actually looks like. You can adjust the sliders to adjust how the gradient appears. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rotate it here by hovering it on the right hand side. Okay. And then I'm going to reposition that. And then you can bring these down and in if you want. Uh, it takes a little finagling, but uh, just sort of play around with it. The tool itself is actually kind of fun to use uh, once you get the hang of it. There we go. And it allows you to edit the gradient as it appears in the object, which is kind of an advantage over what it used to be. Uh, you used to not be able to see this as you edited it. Um, to edit the actual gradient itself, you want to have the gradient panel open. Uh, to open that, go to Window, Gradient. And then inside here, you can change the colors by clicking on the color sliders or the gradient sliders. So I can change that to red if I want, and I can change this to red if I want. Okay. And, uh, you know, of course, if you need to change the orientation of these, you can adjust them here, but you can also adjust them inside of this gradient panel as well. Um, when you're happy with it, I'll show you a couple other techniques here. Okay, so one technique I like to use because uh, it's just super, super cool, is um, uh, the Perspective Grid tool. Now this tool can be kind of frustrating to use if you've never used it before, so just play around with it. It's not something that you have to use for this project, but it is something cool you could try out. Uh, to use the Perspective Grid tool, just click and hold on the Perspective Grid tool uh, group here and uh, just release over the Perspective Grid tool. That'll turn on the uh, Perspective Grid. And you can adjust the grid itself to uh, kind of help you align objects to your perspective grid here. I'm not going to go through all the things you can edit with this, but you can edit the endpoints. You can edit how tall it is, uh, basically the foundation of how objects would appear in three dimensions. Um, and then you can go to your uh, perspective selection tool, which is underneath the perspective grid tool. And if you release on that, depending on which side you have of your grid active uh, is which side you will copy your object to. So if I want my Back to the Future to be copied to this orange side here on the right, I, I need to make sure that's my active side. And then I'm just going to hold down the Alt key and copy that to the orange here. Now as soon as it's there, I can uh, of course adjust it. I can make it bigger. I can move it around the grid uh, and it stays three dimensional. So that's actually really cool. Um, when you don't want to see the grid, uh, you just use the perspective grid tool to kind of hide it. There's a little X mark in the upper left hand corner of that tool that allows you to hide it. So click that to hide it. And then um, if you can't click on that X or it's too frustrating, go to view. And then under perspective grid, you can just uh, show or hide the grid. Okay. Once an object has been removed from the grid, it stays with the grid. So if you move it around 
with the perspective grid tool with the grid turned off, it'll stay in perspective. As soon as you switch to a regular selection tool, it will be off of that grid. So notice how it doesn't move in the grid anymore. And it won't move back into the grid. In fact, if you move it back into the grid, it'll be even warped further. So be kind of careful with that. Um, the next thing we're going to show you uh, has to do with uh, some effects. Um, effects in Illustrator are kind of cool, but um, I don't use them that often. To apply an effect to an object, uh, make sure you select that object and then go to the effect menu. Now there's an awful lot of options in here. I highly recommend you just play around with them and see what happens. There's you know a bunch of cool things here. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to go through a handful. Uh, one that I like to use is under stylize. And actually I like all of these under stylize. Um, one, of them, one of them is called round corners. If you turn on round corners you get this little dialog box. Check the preview and you'll notice it'll take any uh, sharp pointy corners and it'll round them off for you. Um, if I turn that up it'll make them even rounder and then when I click OK it'll appear as if those corners are round. So that's a really kind of clever way to change the appearance of something real quick. Um, and if I click on this object and go to my um, appearance uh, panel here that uh, actual effects will be under the appearance panel. And I can click on this again to adjust it or I can uh, delete it from my appearance. Again, if you don't see the appearance panel, go to window um, appearance to open that up. And uh, it also has a little section for my stroke and my fill. I can apply uh, all sorts of things to these to create some really crazy looking stuff. And I can I can add more effects if I want to. So while this object is selected, let's add another effect. Auto effect, uh, stylize. Let's try uh, outer glow. And I'm just going to leave it at normal. And it's a black glow. If I preview it here, you'll see kind of a gray haze go around that. And you can adjust these settings as much as you want. Okay. So there's some things you can try with your text. Obviously, at any point in time, if you expand your text, those objects will become uh, editable, okay? And they will become shapes. Uh, you're going to have to be careful with that because the way it works is they will separate the effects into an image and there will be a compound path for your actual vector shapes. Uh, if you keep expanding it further, things like uh, the gradient will transform into separate objects. Uh, so now you can see the gradient is these separate barred lines here. Um, that can be kind of weird looking or desirable, depends on your preferences. And you can do other things to edit the type. Some other things I've uh, mentioned in the past that you can use to edit type, there's a bunch of warp and building tools over here. So if you go under the width tool, there's a warp tool. You can use that to kind of warp things if you want. Uh, you can use You can use um, any of the skew tools here, like the shear tool. This will kind of warp things a little bit more. Um, you've got all your drawing tools. You've got Pathfinder. So really play around with uh, your type here. When you're ready to move it into Illustrator or uh, Photoshop, that's, that's easy too. OK, so let's say we have some text. Uh, we made an Illustrator. We want to move it to Photoshop. That's really simple. Uh, just select your object, uh, click uh, control or hit uh, control C to copy the object and then go to Photoshop and then you can hit control V to paste it. So control V will paste it and you're, you're going to have an option. You can, you can paste it as a path, you can paste it as a smart object. Uh, your best option is to paste it as pixels and that will transform the vectors into a rasterized image, a pixelated image. So it won't have that super high resolution it had as a vector. It will become pixels. Uh, if you transform it as a path or a shape layer, sometimes not every single path is going to translate and Photoshop really doesn't handle vectors too well. It's not meant to. So I would highly uh, disencourage these. Um, so let's click OK. 
see what we get. Might take a while here. Uh, there we go. So we can make this a little bit larger. And there we go. We kind of redesigned Back to the Future logo. Okay. Uh, check mark the little box here to kind of confirm your transformation. And it looks not too bad. Uh, it'll be on its own layer, and I can continue to edit it in Photoshop should I want to. Um, but that's, that's totally up to you. Um, for the movie and gig poster project, you have to do this three times. Uh, for the other projects, you have to make uh, the equivalent amount of stuff. So you have to make at least, I, I believe, three designs for each. Uh, and then the brand identity, there's about six or seven components to that, but um, they're a lot smaller.